Good morning, Mail-In Squad. I'm your host, Brad Merriman, on this ride that is the Mail-In Podcast. To my right, my co-host, my co-pilot, the lovely, the one and only Sally DeFreeze. Hello, Sally. Good morning. Good morning. What's going on? I feel like that was a new intro for you. I was just switching it up. Switching it up. Switching it up. I would, I'm fresh off listening to the Female In podcast, mm-hmm. featuring yourself, uh, doing a great job as host, by Thanks. the way. I tried. Uh, with Alyssa Ruff and Lily Betcher. Very good episode. Oh, also, shouts to uh, Brady, who was on the Brady's podcast. first pod. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Six Drew. Six week old. Sorry, Drew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was very fun. You guys did a great job. Thanks. If you haven't we listened to it, please go listen to that. Um, somebody was like, "Hey, Brett, you're just you're good. You can you can stay off the pot." So that was me. I told him to not be there. <laughs> What's going on with you, Sally? How was your uh, Valentine's Day? It was good. I'm exhausted for some reason. Okay. I don't. I I think there was like a weather pattern change or something last night. There. Yes, you're absolutely right. So, I know that that sounds crazy, but like I. I didn't do anything out of the ordinary yesterday. And I will, you know, when you have those like hard sleeps where you just are so conked out and you wake up and you're like, I don't even know where I am. I do. And like the snooze button, like I've had sleeps before where you hit the snooze button on the alarm and then like the nine minutes doesn't seem to go by. It's like nine seconds. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, okay. I thought it was Saturday when I woke up today. Wow. So I'm a little off. I'm having this coffee. I'm trying to like get my bearings. Mm Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I have a full day ahead of myself to just pretty much do nothing except for oh, nice. pick up Fritz from school. No errands today? Not really. No. Yeah. But our Valentine's Day was great. We went to Uchiko. We oh, very nice. Did little, they have the Wagyu uh, hot rock back the, on the menu? It is back on the menu. Thank God. Because Will was, Will was nervous about that yesterday. No, okay. Well, okay. Let me clarify. Mm-hmm. The Gitoro is the 72-hour sous vide uh wagyu bite that's uh, the gitaro okay. the hot rock is where they bring you i think some sort of wagyu beef and you like sear it yourself on a hot rock and we decided that that is the chuggiest thing that you can order <laughs> ouch which i do order so yeah I, it's all kitschy it's live, like laugh love so so the couple next to it, it, the whole restaurant was couples. There was like maybe that two makes, tables of four. And they sat us at a four top and we're like, damn, we should have invited somebody. Had I known, would have brought another couple <coughs> or two randoms. I don't give a shit. Anyway, we never ordered the hot rock. I, I don't really care. I would rather they prepare my food. But uh, the couple next to us sat on the same side of the booth or sat on the same side of the table. We were in one of those like tables that was half booth, half chairs. Right. Okay. So, yep. like, I sat on the booth side. Will sat across from me. The couple next to us sat next to each other. What do you think about when couples do that? Uh, if if it's necessary, totally fine with it. Like at a group dinner. Right. But totally like, fine. You're, but I'm saying you're at a four top. There's only two of you. You just leave one whole side open. I prefer to sit across. Correct. Or I'm kind of thinking a four top, a square. I don't mind necessarily having like the two like here. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You're if you're in a full square situation rather mm-hmm. than a rectangle. Yeah. And you sit like one side and one side. Right. I think that's okay because mm-hmm. you're still kind of across from each other. Yep. I feel like when we were on vacation in like uh, Italy, they would sit you like that because you're like facing the view. You know. Yeah. 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 Which is kind of where I'm. I think my my brain goes right. So they're like they like sit you like that so you can like see the view. Yeah, and one person's back is into it. That doesn't bother me. But like at a rectangle or a booth, you don't need to sit on the same side. I'm with you on that. I it's tough on conversation. Yeah, you don't have as much space. I also not a big PDA person that I like need to be touching Will while I'm eating. Right, like I don't need to be like holding his hand Mm -hmm. or like. Feeding him. So the couple next yeah. to us was over the top. Oh. Like, so they get this hot rock. They're like, feed, they're like searing it for each other and like feeding it to each other. Oh no. And I was just like, I, I don't even know that I was ever in an infatuation stage with Will where I was going to feed him. You know what I'm saying? Give me, give me your hand and let me feed you hot rock. Oh like no. Like, even Fritz won't let me feed him. Like, I'm not trying to. Oh my gosh. I don't know. So anyway, the whole thing with the hot rock is they bring out a steaming hot rock. I, I think this is like obviously a normal thing at restaurants, like a shabu shabu type restaurant where you like 
they bring you a bunch of platters of things and then you kind of like cook it yourself or like Mm -hmm. cook it in broth or whatever. Sure. This reminded me of a restaurant that we went to as kids, like one or once or twice where I don't think this exists anymore. And I need to like text my family and figure out what it was called. But you went, ordered the cuts of meat you wanted. They brought them out. You're at a like Benihana type grill top flat situation where that's your table. Yeah. And then you just cook the steaks yourself. No way. And I remember going as kids and my dad was like so pumped about it. And I guess then you like from the kitchen, you know, you're getting like drinks from the kitchen and or from the bar and then like sides from the kitchen. Sure. But you're just cooking your own steak. I'm like, does anybody want to do that? I think <laughs> like if you're going like to a restaurant, red, you're red gonna you're American there to male. like have the person cook you food. If you right. want to cook a steak, you just I obviously it was like a full blown like experience and my i remember i was young when we did this probably like 10 and i remember my dad was like so pumped about it yeah it feels like a very it's like a a dad place yeah well and like as when you have kids you're like we just we're gonna go kill some time this is gonna be interesting for them they're gonna Mm -hmm. it's a whole new environment because obviously it's different from cooking steaks at home because like they get to be interactive with it and you're at a restaurant so it's like a double whammy but i told will that last night he was like that is the weirdest concept for a restaurant I've ever heard. I agree. I I the whole I love having food cooked for me. I I'm gonna That's have to text to my family today and see if anybody remembers what yeah, it was called. I wonder what that is. I I know exactly where it was in Austin. It's like basically like uh 183 and like um I35, which is okay. now the like link area or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in there. Interesting. Okay. It's not there anymore, obviously. It's something else now. Mm. Uh how wild is that? I, you know, I, like my wheels are spinning now. I'm just thinking of like another, what would be a good dad restaurant? And it would be that concept, but with like grill tops. And so you just do like grilled hamburgers, chicken. Right. I, I think you could do, I like, I know this place was steak, but I'm sure you could order other shit besides steak yeah, I love to it. grill. But like, again, I don't want to do it, but I, I'd love I'm to go. I'm happy to like be at the grill top, watch them cook, like love a Benihana situation. Sure. Yes. But like, I also, want them to cook i'm happy to watch it happen Mm -hmm. but i don't need to be the one cooking myself that's why i go to a restaurant right so i don't have to do the work i i uh i suggested we go to benihana for klein's uh bachelor party i was shot down sad sad i don't even think austin has a benihana uh no it was just it was specifically the las vegas one. right right but i think austin has like a maybe it's called tokyo grill or something I'm not sure. It's not even an Austin proper. Although you can do the backyard ones. Oh, backyard hibachi. Yeah. So fun. Be prepared to be absolutely hammered, but so fun. Yeah. They don't they don't have when they shoot sake down your gullet, they yeah. don't stop when you tell them to stop. It's uh I it's we have, unfortunately have not done one. We were supposed to do it last year for Will's birthday, but mm-hmm. it was like sleeting and like 40 degrees. Mm-hmm. So I had to yeah. cancel it. And that was when it, like there was like a big wave. Maybe it was Omicron. Like a bunch of people got COVID that first week of January last yeah. year, 2022. Yep. Yep. So I was just like, well, we got to cancel. Everyone's got COVID. It's going to be freezing rain outside. You don't want Saki to freeze to your Well, and you can't. Jacket. Well, would it freeze because of the alcohol content? I don't know. I was just making a joke. But you also can't be sitting outside. They can't do it inside. I'm sure no, it's a fire hazard no, God, of no. like random people's homes. And just a mess. A mess. And then think about how much your home would smell for days. Oh, like like fire, fried rice, and sake. Do we have a – Which kind of does anyway, you know what I'm saying, Randy? Do, should we make a concept restaurant where you basically – it's a hibachi but just for sizzling fajitas like in front of you? I've I've literally thought of this before, Sally, because I, th- I, I equate the sizzle with – Hibachi, yeah, and I'm like, why don't why don't we just do like a Mexican hibachi? It's a, I know it's a that great they idea. put it on it's a, a hot idea. plate in front of you. My issue with that is the meat keeps cooking once it's on the hot plate. So like mm-hmm. the first few bites are like the best meat because it's still tender on the inside. But the last fajita is like a full, well done fajita. It's it's beef jerky by the end. Yeah, or so I, it would make sense if you had a chef there with the hibachi grill and serving it to you fresh. You're getting yeah, fresher fajitas. Dude's just frisbeeing tortillas on the plates. Yeah. And, and I don't know it's what It's a the, concept. If we have any investors who want to. Instead of a bottle of sake, it's like a bottle of tequila that they're just. Yeah. Pouring, like super soakering down your 
your throat, I'm in. I'm in. I will put up 1,000 American dollars okay. for this concept. Oh, thank you. That'll buy like one. You got to start somewhere. Let's crowdfund it. One day of meat from a really <laughs> cheap place. Or four oh, people. man. Speaking of meat, we're the mail-in podcast. We answer questions and uh, try to make you laugh sometimes. Maybe walk away or give you something to walk away with. Please tell a friend about the show. Send some clips. Subscribe on iTunes. Follow on Spotify. Hit the hotline number 888-362-MAIL. That's 888-362-6245. Or write in at the link in the Twitter bio at Mail-In Podcast or at the bottom of this episode description in your little app, whatever you're listening on, iTunes, Spotify, you name it. There's a little link at the bottom that says right into the Mail-In. Uh, I know this because I do it. Hit up the store, washmedia.shop, and hit up the YouTube, youtube.com slash mail podcast. Sally, are you ready to go? I am ready, and I just did send out a text to my family asking what the name of the Grill Your Own Steak restaurant is. So if someone responds to me during the podcast, I will announce it. That is investigative journalism from yeah. Sally DeFreeze. Thank you very much. Hi, <laughs> Brett and Sally. I'm curious what your thoughts are on influencers these days. Like Randy Trembacki. I feel like everyone now is trying to be or thinks they are an influencer. Personally, I'm tired of the constant swipe ups and clicks to links. I believe society is buying into a ton of junk and making people rich off these swipe up purchases. Do you think this influencer bubble will burst? I also feel like, excuse me, it's hurting society because no one wants to work anymore. Everyone posts curated pics on Instagram for swipes and links and everything down to what is in their bathroom drawer. When will this madness end? Okay, I read an article. It might have been on New York Times like this week about de-influencing. Have you Ooh, seen this? I have not seen de-influencing. A, a, essentially, de-influencing is like people, instead of telling people to buy something, they're telling people to not buy something. Ooh. It's like, okay. hey, I did this. I, I got this product and I don't like it, so don't buy it. Nice. That's is, so new. is this like some guerrilla counter marketing kind of stuff? I think kind of. Okay. Um, influencers for me, I mean, we know that I have like the joke, fake influencing sal gals that I like legitimately have like considered like actually posting to also as a joke, not as like a legitimate business. Like, mm -hmm. let's, let me be clear. Like I'm a CRNA. I went to three years of grad school. I will continue to be a CRNA unless I like do not like that job, but I'm not going to like leave my job to do something in media. Yeah. Uh, I, I love this little side hustle. I love hanging out with you on Wednesday mornings, but like I also really like that job. Sure. Um, on that being said, I think being an influencer, a successful one takes a lot of work. True. I, I think there's, there's a big misconception that you can just quit your job, post to social media, make money. And if watching Washed has taught me anything, like especially Will with Sunday Scaries, like that's a full on grind all the time. Mm -hmm. Like all well, the time. Especially running it as a solo operation. Right. And like his is not, you know, a an influencer like it to know it. But I have been around people that I know who are influencers. And that's mm -hmm. the other thing. No part of your life can really be private because you have to turn every single thing you do into an opportunity to influence. So like if you go on a trip, I've been on a trip with a like a bunch of girls and one of them was an influencer. Sure. Every single thing had to be a picture opportunity, had to be this, had to like we had to capture this with our phones. And as annoying as that is, and everyone's also already doing it for their own stories, like she was actually like having to get out her like really nice camera, like take photos. It's like you're not you're not like when you see influencers mm -hmm. going on vacation and stuff and it's like an ad situation, like that's work. That is not. It's fun work, but it's work. But like it's is it even fun? Because like for me on vacation, like I want to like totally disconnect. Sure. Yeah. When this episode airs, Will and I are going to be in California on our anniversary trip and we've already talked about like. Let's like mm -hmm. straight up like leave our phones in the room. Like I don't want to like talk to people. I want to like relax. And to have to fully be on and like thinking of like what content yeah. am I going to post is a lot. I'm 
I'm not like saying I admire them or anything. I'm just saying I think that there's a misconception from the rest of the world. It's like, oh, this is like an easy thing. And the people who are influencing like that is a full time job if you are making money off of it. Mm -hmm. And some people are doing it as a full time job and not making money. So that's Very not true. great either. I mean, I think <laughs> I think we have people, the people who got in early probably do well off of it mm -hmm. because they got followings. But to like build a following now, I think takes so much time and effort. I agree. I think, I, well, I totally agree with all of it. Like there's, there's influencing and content creation is, is not a, like uh, a job that is, the, the connotation is, is brutal for it. It's like, right. oh, these guys don't do shit. They just post all day. It's like, right. yeah, they do, but that's, that's a job. Um, I think my, my problem with the influencer thing is more about the, the sort of the wannabe influencer yeah. Which is I get it. Like you're you're emulating somebody who has a million followers with your but 4, you're like, yeah. And like I think that is shoot use the wrong word, but like so like, do come you on. not appreciate my sal gals. No, I <laughs> I'm kidding. I love, I love your sal gals. <laughs> I just I, really I think there's care. something like I, I I don't like the the aspiration to be an influence. Right. Like I I want to be famous. I want to be paid for getting all these free products and selling them to people i like i i find something like icky about that so there's a couple the, here's a couple other things i was gonna say one is i will follow somebody based on someone else's recommendation they're mm -hmm. like oh i got this this person recommended it i will follow them i'll be like super into it this person for like two weeks because mm -hmm. of the novelty of like you're like oh this like person's content is new etc and then you're like they annoy the shit out of me. It, it yeah. like two weeks is about the time for me to like the people that I follow now are like the real ones. You're that not I influenced like, in two weeks, you're out. But like, no, but or I'm like too influenced. I'm like, oh my God, they won't shut the hell up about, you know, whatever Amazon storefront they have. Yeah. yeah. So I think that I I cycle through people quickly. Um, there are a couple accounts that I follow. One that I'm going to shout out that I've shouted out before. Things I Bought and Liked mm -hmm. is a girl from Texas that does it anonymously and she doesn't take any uh, commission. I, maybe she – I think she gets affiliate stuff. Sure. But she okay. doesn't do any promoted stuff. It's all stuff that she buys herself and – Has to like before – like legitimately before she's or gonna... But it doesn't – she doesn't even like – she also de-influences where she's like, I bought this whatever face thing and I don't like it. Sure. So not worth it for me. I trust that because she's not getting ad money, but also mm -hmm. because she's totally anonymous. She's not like talking into her phone. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you like have never seen her face. Um, that the problem though is I trust her so much that if she per if she posts something, I'm like shit. I gotta buy this. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like this person said, is this creating a culture of like wanting stuff that we don't actually need? Absolutely. So Correct, I, yeah. I have to remember when I'm on Instagram or like seeing something about to buy something. This is something I've been way more cognizant of in the past couple months is like I'm going to open that link, leave it on my phone for like a week and come back and revisit and be like, is this something I need? Like I'm mm – -hmm. 2023 is the year of like buying things I need, not things I want. I like that. Because I think it's really easy to get sucked in and be like, Oh my God, I've got to get the, those ankle socks that this influencer posted about. And then you're like, why do I need those socks? I don't even wear those. Yeah. I also think my other point is, and Wash does a good job of this, you know, because you do the ad sales. Mm -hmm. No one, we don't do ads for anything that we don't personally like. Correct. Uh, we, in pulling back curtains, I've said no to plenty Correct. of brands, plenty of opportunities for us if they don't make sense it when i see influencers especially ones that i know are loaded mm -hmm. posting about like their walmart fashion finds i'm like no one believes you yeah you are literally carrying around a dior bag no one believes that you go shop at walmart for shoes and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with walmart i but i'm saying like i think it's really easy once you start being successful or you want to be successful and you want to mm -hmm. make money to take on brand partnerships with people that you don't you wouldn't normally just for the cash for the cash yeah because i know that walmart is shelling out money for people and so i'm like i just don't believe that 
It's not believable to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know that this bubble will ever burst. I think no. that there's a big part of marketing that relies on influencers. Because it works. And it works for brands and it works for podcasts. It, it, like the model works because the whole idea is you get people to be, and this is why this, it's content first, especially in, in the washed universe. We want our content to be as relatable and and you feel like you're friends with every host. Yeah. Like you feel like you're literally can introduce them to your family at Thanksgiving. But that's like that's our goal is to make you laugh and feel like you're our friend. Because we want that. Like that's uh-huh. legitimate. Like that's why we do meetups. That's why we do everything. Because we want to be that connected and close to our audience. And then when you turn around and say, Hey, I I like this product, I think you'll like it too. It helps everybody. It helps you, the listener, because you get a product that you know we endorse because we actually legitimately like it or use it, like literally wearing a Roan shirt as we speak. Right. I love this shirt. Um, and it helps us because we can make money that continues to allow us to do this. Right. For a living. I think, too, I have been, again, when I'm trying to be more like, not buying shit I don't need. Mm -hmm. There are times we were at a girl's dinner on Monday and we were talking about like some baby product. And I was like, well, you send me the link to that. Like I really, that is the original influencing. So Mm -hmm. if someone DMs me and is like, Hey, I really like that shirt you're wearing. Where's that from? Like happy to answer it. I will do that to my own friends. Like if I see something that they post, I'm like, Oh my God, where's that swimsuit brand from? Yeah. Like you could, I don't know. I, I think that, Seeing content that's not being shoved in your face and then liking it is still being influenced by other people, but obviously less yeah. targeted at you. Influence being, influencing has been around forever. Right. It's just now shifting onto multiple platforms. Right. And sometimes you're just going to have to mute the person that is trying to sell you a toothbrush in their bathroom drawer. Influencing is like what product placement was in the early 90s where mm-hmm. they discovered that they could like put Coca-Cola in a – or Pepsi in a Home Alone and that everyone was going to drink Pepsi because Fuller was drinking it and yeah. pee the bed. Mm-hmm. Should be very apparent how much I watch Home Alone at this point. Yeah, we said – we I asked – uh, Will the other day, I was like, "Does it, we're out of the Christmas season, but do you still throw like Home Alone on?" He's like, yeah, "Yeah, yeah, we have like to. once a week at least." <laughs> um, that's a good question. I think we could probably do an entire podcast on. Oh yeah, something along those lines because it is interesting. It's it's interesting how it changes, how it's how it's started, how it continues, and I guess the last thing I want to say on that is, I said it's like I kind of get the ick from aspirational influencers, but if you have done something with content like like think of the dude perfect guys for example who have built an empire on trick shots because they love the content and people people who actually love doing whether it's streaming video games and um guys that are you know like dude perfect guys or you name it like who are actually doing something they love content wise yeah and then can monetize it because they've built up the audience versus trying to monetize it from day one and being right. like i like this shirt buy it or not you know yeah something about that i think is a different there's a, like a dichotomy there but i wanted to just make sure that's a, a clear thing before i, get I mean like to be clear when i'm like jokingly doing sal gals and will hates it i will never ever ever do what uh patrick mahomes jackson mahomes was that his name yeah that's his little brother was doing behind him interviewing post super bowl crazy <laughs> like Absolutely dancing like absurd. that is that's a point in society when you see that out in the wild and you're like these people like and it happens a lot in austin austin is a very like influencer forward city I, mm-hmm. like People think it's a mini LA. You will like drive down the street and see people like dancing or posing or whatever. And you're like, this is, this is a part of society that I'm starting to get real unsure of. Like yeah. if the but, aliens come here, are they going to be like, <laughs> we're good. Actually, we're going to, we'll go back to I, the planet we came from. I do think there's an interesting thing with this, like the influencer economy too, is that, that it sort of creates, like it creates ability for, for brands to go from zero to 100 immediately it creates yeah. jobs where you know photographers and social media editors and like there's, there's kind of like this new wave of hey like what do you do for a living oh i like edit people's instagrams and make them pretty and then sell them 
back to like take yeah. a cut of their brand deals. I think it's like an interesting overall thing that is sort of just influencing is influencing. And then you kind of have these these like I don't know tentacles of whatever that yeah. that help go into this. But I don't think the bubble is going to burst. Uh, I think prices will regulate. Like I think it's crazy yeah. for somebody to because the following like people sell on followings and I half the time those followings are all bullshit. So it's like like go to Sunday Scaries. Will has 350,000 followers on Sunday Scaries and does like 45 50,000 likes on posts. Yeah. You go to a brand that has 500,000 followers and they're doing like 1200 likes on a post or and like no comments. You see like influencers 50. doing that? Yeah, yeah, right. And they're and you're right. And, and it's maybe, like bots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just, that is a bubble. If you see somebody buying followers and there are 300,000 and there's doing no engagement and brands are still buying based on following, that's arguably like fraud. That's not even arguable. That's fraud. And they should be punished for that. Yeah. But I have a big update before we go to the the restaurant was called you are like you, the letter are the letter cooks. Oh, so they, they're very they're very transparent about what you're doing here. Yeah, you yeah, you are cooks. <laughs> I wonder what happened at you are cooks. Uh, well, another podcast for another Hey, you time. are cooks. You are cooked. Speaking of influencing. Yeah. Can I tell you about a product that I used literally last night? Uh-huh. This is Z Biotics, Sally. I just got mine in last night, uh-huh. like right before we left, so I didn't get a chance to like open it and see what was going on, and now I'm having prepared for it this morning and also mm-hmm. opening it this morning i'm like psyched up it is so interesting okay here's the deal we all have busy lives these days like sally today yeah <laughs> so busy uh and we cannot afford to waste a day stuck on the couch because of a few drinks the night before that's why z biotics is the answer we've all been looking for sally here we go Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works, because that's just a big claim, right? But here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. Mm-hmm. Ac- acetaldehyde? Acetaldehyde? Acetaldehyde. There we go. It's not It's not even the copy. I'm just going off the dome on that one. Yeah. Acet- acetaldehyde. There you go. It is this byproduct, not dehydration, that is to blame for your rough next day. So here's what Zbiotics does. They produce an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work in your, like your liver, but it's in your gut where you need it the most, where the alcohol is. Just remember to drink Zabiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly while you are drinking alcohol and then get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. So like anything, I was like, oh, you know, a uh, a, a help, a, a rough next morning thing you can drink to help out. I'm like, okay, you know, heard of this before. Uh-huh. Did it last night before having some wine. For uh, for little Valentine's Day situation, feels like I didn't do anything last night. Feels like I got a good night's sleep. Couldn't tell you that I had any drinks. That's great. That was unbelievable, and I I can't say anything but like I I did this this little drink Zbiotics thing, probiotic, and we're good to go this morning. Drank responsibly. Had some Zbiotics and we're good to go. Love it. Love it. Give Zbiotics a try for yourself. Go to zbiotics.com slash mail to get 15% off your order when you use mail at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you are unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Again, head to zbiotics.com slash mail and use code M-A-I-L at checkout for 15% off. Shouts to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode. Uh, next one, Sally, ready? Yes. Here's the background, guys. Uh, I live with my long-term girlfriend, who I would like to propose to soon. 
We're both extremely happy and doing well in our professional careers and excited to move to the next stage in life together. Here's the issue. We live a long distance from both of our parents who live fairly close together. And as we move towards the next stage, she wants to be closer to home. This would mean uprooting our current lives in order to do so. This would also mean quitting the job I love in a field where working remotely is impossible. After just recently having been promoted and receiving a good raise and future prospects with this company uh, are extremely high. A little sentence structure there. Uh, we have discussed all options at length, but have come to a stalemate with her stance being a non-negotiable uh, to move within the year. And mine being to do anything to not quit my current job. We're both afraid of giving in to the other and eventually harboring resentment in either case. We're both very happy and would like to eventually be married, but this is an issue that would obviously need to be decided prior to that. What advice would you give for healthy discussion and factors that should weigh more heavily as we are both truly torn on the matter? We have quite the stalemate here. So Yeah. I mean, one person's going to have to give in, right? It's a very difficult I, – I feel like even a like true compromise in this situation, like let's move halfway, nobody wins there. Right. So the – Even like compromises, mm -hmm. decisions that you make as a couple when you're getting married or are married, one person is going to have to give more than the other. Like mm -hmm. there's no true 50-50 compromise in my opinion. Sure. Because at that – well, anytime you're compromising, you're giving up what you wanted anyway, right? So – Yeah. Um, You're going to just have to learn to let go of the resentment, either one of you. I think the – um, for me, and it's hard to know, like the full context, like he gave some, but like, why is she absolutely determined to go home this year? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, for me, I'm like, you have the job that you like. Mm -hmm. Is it worth like trying to stay there for a couple more years and then going home, you know, like yeah. put it in your five year plan? Yeah, I, I think that was kind of my first thought here. And and I don't know if they're necessarily asking us to solve their problem. Yeah. I think it's more like how do you get a discussion going that can be productive in solving the problem? So that's like the two separate things. But when I did read this, I said, well, if you want – if going home at some point is in the cards, why does it have to be now in the yeah. cards? Unless there's like, you know – something with the family which would make sense if somebody's right. sick or if somebody's you know if there's a baby or you know stuff like that right but when you're like not married yet there's no child involved to to for helping you know as far as like taking care of things go and babysitters and whatnot and there's no health issue mm -hmm. with parents then why do we need to be there now right five-year plan totally different hey let's let's live here for three good job good salary save up save up save up buy a house closer to home or rent closer to, whatever the scenario is and then there's kids and you know stuff like that if they want but i think this the the sense of urgency here i would is my question well i think that's a discussion too of like what is your actual each of your motives for wanting to do what you want to do. So mm -hmm. yes, you're at a good job. You just got a promotion. You can't do your job in the city that you would move to. You can't do it remotely. But what is the driving factor for you wanting that job? Is it like the sense of satisfaction, personal satisfaction? Is it the money you're making and you're worried about a financial future? Mm -hmm. Is it, I, I mean, all of those are valid things, but you have to, you have to pinpoint the why. Right. Yeah. So he needs to pinpoint the like, I have great job satisfaction. I'm worried I won't have that when we move. I um, really enjoy what I do and that this job doesn't exist somewhere else. Um, I really like the salary and mm -hmm. I know that I'm making more here than I would when we move. All of those, like, what's the why? Okay. For her, is it like 
all of her friends are there and she wants to be closer to her friends? Is it her family's there? Is it that she doesn't like the city she's currently in? Like, what's her why? Because you have to, anytime you're having one of these, this isn't even a fight, but a discussion or a fight or whatever, the argument that's happening is all backed up by the emotion behind it. And you have to pinpoint the emotion. I think that's what's really hard for people Mm -hmm. when they are discussing things like this is like, and especially when they're not seeing eye to eye, it's easier to understand and empathize with somebody when you know what they're, um, driving emotion is totally so agree. when you're in a fight with somebody and you're upset because let's say you were out all night and i'm upset Didn't have your Z-biotics. right i'm upset because you were out all night and now you're hungover today and not helpful and whatever because mm-hmm. you didn't have your z-biotics i what the real emotion is i wanted to spend time with you mm-hmm. and you were out and i felt abandoned and I, I, I was craving uh, togetherness, okay? Sure. But if I'm just throwing this at you like you were gone and you didn't check in and now you're hungover and you're being a piece of shit, da, 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 there's no – when I'm saying all that at you, you don't understand that, hey, she felt abandoned. She wanted to hang out with me. She wanted to spend quality time because all yeah. you hear is you're a piece of shit, you were gone, whatever. So you're that's fighting over the want, not the why. Right. So, How about that for some – Fucking wow, we internet. Smart. So when you're discussing stuff. things like this, when you have when you have stalemates because you, neither one of you can see the other point of view, mm-hmm. you have to go back to the emotional part of like what's the real driving force here? Yeah. Is she so close with her parents that she like needs to physically spend time with them? And she's maybe she's worried about the future. Her parents are getting older. She wants to be closer to them. Yeah. And she's, you know, thinking about that. Maybe you are trying to keep this job because you want to buy a house and you know that that's like in your three-year plan that if you save up this money, you've got enough for a down payment and you're worried about financial security and you want to provide best for her. That, that is what you say. Not like I am in a great job that I can't do somewhere else. And she's not like, I want to live in our hometown of Cincinnati because that's where I grew up. You yeah. say that I have nostalgia and I want to be home because yeah. I like it there. Break down to like the like the primal, like what is the, like the core stuff here? And then maybe you prioritize those or rank those. And like, like I think, yeah, I think you, you approach it like why at a very, very, very core level. And then you are able to empathize with the other person. Which is, I think, one of the most important things in relationships, friendships, uh, political environments. Empathy is so, like, non-existent, it feels like, these days. The ability to see some issue or some solution or some want or need from the point of view of another person and empathize with that cause or that, you name it, is like, it feels non-existent these days. Right. And then on the the second part of that is when you've started to see that point, you also, in any relationship, have to let go of that resentment Mm -hmm. factor. One of the biggest things of like having a successful communicative, it's not right, relationship is um, you cannot... Say they move, okay? He can't use that against her every time they get in a fight. I left this for you. Relationships are about sacrifices. Mm -hmm. You you just have to learn to let go of that. If you love somebody, you want to be with them, and you're doing what you can to make it work, or you know, not even to make it work, to just like thrive in your relationship, little things that you've done to sacrifice, whether it's moving for somebody or the fact that you took the dog out that morning, it's not a competition. You cannot use that later on as leverage against their emotions or for another decision or anything like that, that you've got to leave your ego at the door. And that includes like being resentful about not getting your way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's totally fair. I think that's totally fair. And I guess the last point I have on this situation is that Regardless of what happens or who, you know, quote unquote, wins this 
stalemate. Life is going to go on, you know, in, in a way where it's, okay, if you do move to your girlfriend's hometown and you give up your job and you give up everything that you thought was like this core tenant or whatever it might be, you will find something else. You will right. move on to this new situation that you can grow and figure it out. And then five years from now, maybe you look back and say, that was, that was a, a dumb thing to look on as, as sort of this non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. Or you, she ends up staying in the city you're currently in and the same thing happens. So it's like, I think painting a, a, a story of light at the end of the tunnel here is important because life does go on, especially when you just commit or, or say, hey, we're going to do this together. Whatever solution you come to, it's going to be okay. And I think that's just something I wanted to end with on that. Next yeah. one? Next one. Hey, y'all. Love the pod. Here's the deal. I'm a girl in her mid-30s. I've recently gotten into shape and am feeling better in my body than I ever have before. I look and feel awesome. It might sound vain, but I want to show off my hard work a little bit. As we approach swimsuit season, how do I become the hot girl who posts a light thirst trap without being too over the top? Sal Gal's poolside and beach pics always look so effortless and fabulous. I would love to channel that energy. Gassing you up, Sal. How about that? Um, okay. Easy, breezy, beautiful Sal Gal's. <laughs> Congrats on your hard work. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you just kind of have to like leave the being timid at the door. <clears throat> my, my point is, I think probably in the past couple of years, I've been a lot more confident of just posting pictures of myself to my Instagram because mm -hmm. I feel like most of my, in or social media in general, was like geared towards my friendships or my relationship or my child or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but if I see a picture of myself and I like it, I'm like, I'm going to, show that to the world. I'm happy yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, so uh, the more you, uh, my point is you have to be comfortable posting of yourself more. I think I was on Instagram and realized like some people's profiles are just straight up pictures of only them. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, Oh, okay. There you go. Like, I feel like I try to strike a balance of like myself and things I enjoy. People yeah. I like, uh, Last year, when we were in Cabo all together, me and Alyssa and Lily were taking a lot of pictures. And I had watched the week before a TikTok about posing. <laughs> okay. I I don't even – I do not have a TikTok. I don't use – I don't have TikTok on my phone. You just don't have to scroll. I No, no. I don't even get on oh, TikTok okay. to scroll. Okay, totally. Like I purposely do not have a TikTok I for see, that reason. I see. Someone – I follow posted a TikTok mm -hmm. about posing and there's some TikTok, I mean, this probably exists all over TikTok of people who like teach you how to like, you know, instead of this, do this, instead of this, do this. And so really? I watched this <laughs> thing about a girl who was like talking about like cross your leg in front of your other leg and like put your shoulders back and like kind of turn from the waist so that your waist looks smaller or whatever. And having watched that, just like being more aware of like my body angles, mm -hmm. I have learned to take pictures in ways that seem to be more flattering <laughs> than just like straight on. Uh -huh. But at the same time, like if I have a picture that's, I there are plenty of pictures on my Instagram that are not flattering. Uh, so I think you can be all the body confident you want. That is great. And then learn how to pose yourself in front of a camera if you're going to take a picture that like put makes you look the best that you can yeah and like then that. post it yeah. who cares like honestly if you are too if you're too scared to like throw it fully on the grid i think you can start with stories there you go like a couple soft, stories soft launch if soft you launch soft launch the new bot yeah <laughs> and then and then go full grid who cares yeah like, at this point, Instagram, we have talked about this already this episode and in other episodes. It's a highlight reel. People are posting 
shit that makes them look best, obviously. Mm -hmm. So if you want to like stunt on everyone a little bit, be like, look at my hot body. And I'm also drinking some wine at the beach. Like do it. Absolutely. That's the whole, the whole point of Instagram for most people is just like making other people be like, look, I'm having a great fucking day. Yeah. Right? Like life's too short. No one's on Instagram. Days. I mean, Say, hey, some people are on Instagram day. crying, but like most people are on Instagram, like posting like the top 0.1% of their life's moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what Instagram is. So throw it out there into the, the social media verse. Throw it up, throw it up. You might say. Yeah. Um, my my two cents here is that I uh, I had a similar revelation on my social media at one point, especially my Instagram grid, where it was just uh, nine out of ten pictures were like four guys in a line, yeah, with like arms over the shoulders, and I was like, like, come on, dude, you're more interesting than that. Like you're you're more interesting than just four guys in a line at like you name it event. But or like maybe bar. that's what that person wants to post. Totally. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying that was me, and I was like, yeah, I, I can be. I, there, there's got to be something be better than that. Yeah, I can, be, I can be better than that. So I think my uh, foray into being more confident as far as Instagram and posting goes, you know, I, like you said, friendships, relationships are like dogs, cats, one thing. Yeah. And then there's like the me stuff, and I think my my pivot, not pivot, but like my toe in the water there was like a, like candid stuff. So having a friend that's taking some sort of candid picture of you, whether yeah. you know it or not, and kind of doing it that way versus like a solo pose camera look, because I still don't, I'm, I'm still not there yet. I don't think a lot of guys are yeah. to be sexist real quick. Um, but candid stuff, I think is fun and cool and, and kind of shows a, a you doing things. Also, if you're not like ready to fully go number one grid post you in a bikini, Put it, put it in the middle of a photo dump. Oh, a little carousel situation? Yeah. But throw it in like slide four? Yeah. Okay. You know, it doesn't have to be the first thing people see when it pops up, but they're like scrolling. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah, like, whoa. Okay. Go off. Yeah. Go off, Queen. You know how you can uh, help yourself get to that? I have a that bod? inkling of what you're going to say. Do you? Yeah. Athletic Greens? Yeah. That's the one. Uh, athletic Greens, you know we're all about it at this point. They've been on board the mail-in for a long time, and we use them every day, every single day. Athletic Greens is lifestyle-friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, contains one less than one gram of sugar, excuse me, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. It supports better sleep quality and recovery, mental clarity and alertness. It is one thing with the best things. They use the best of the best. Products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. How does it work? 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, sourced superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens to help you start your day right. It is a scoop of green powder that you put in a glass of water, stir it up, steer it up, and then down the hatch. That's it, and you're getting support for your diet that you might not get every day based on your food diet all it's doing is giving you stuff that you need people take vitamins people take supplements people take this that the other thing ag1 is just a simple way to get them all in one scoop of uh, of, of green and then water that's it i said this last week more people have complimented my skin in the past like two weeks than ever. And mm -hmm. I know for a fact it's because I have been consistently using AG1 I agree. every morning. It's cheap too. Less than $3 per day. AG1. We trust it. We know it. We get it. And it helps us out. Simple as that. Right now. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills, supplements to look out for your health and to make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash mail-in. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash mail-in to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Uh, Sally, what do you think of doing the next one?
I mean, I, 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 um, if you want to, I, do you have it? I will have loaded up. <laughs> this is one of our mail-in initiatives. Is that Sally's going to do more questions? Okay. And I forgot about that until right now. Okay. Hey guys, I work for a big four consulting firm in Canada. And last week was traveling to Toronto for countrywide training. Basically when you are hired as a new grad and have been working for the firm for a year, you get sent to do three days of this leadership training course on the first night, 10 of us who met at the course all went out for drinks. It was a very chill sitch. <laughs> It was a weeknight. The bar was not very busy. This is a long one. At one point, I see one guy go over to have a long conversation with the bartender shortly after two bottles of Tito's show up around where we were all standing, which I thought was a little wild considering the vibe. A round of shots gets passed out, and I'm feeling pretty tired, so I Irish exit and Uber home. A week later, I get an email to all 10 of us who were there. Apparently, one of the girls we were with was the last to leave the bar and got pulled aside by security. No one had paid for the Tito's, and the bill for the bottles was $900. In her email, she said she doesn't know who ordered the bottles, but that we each owe $90 to cover her credit card bill. I do feel bad for this girl, but I definitely did not drink $90 worth of Tito's and have my Uber receipt to prove it. Asking around, no one really had much of the bottles since I have a pretty good idea who it was. Is there a work-appropriate way to call out the idiot in the group who ordered $900 in bottle service at 9 p.m. on a Wednesday in hopes that we get them to cover the full charge? Or maybe I bite my tongue and consider the $90 the cost of doing business. Thanks. Other context to note is that since the training was based on your position, we are all in the mid twenties, have the exact same seniority and will likely never see each other again since we all work in different services cities. Ouch. Yikes. Uh, I don't think you send the HR slack like, Hey, this dude ordered $900 of bottle service. I think you, if, if something ever happens again, it's like, yeah, this fucking idiot did this two yeah. years ago. And now this is this other thing happened. Like he, he has lost all like, I'm going to back you up points, Yeah, but I don't think you ruin his job just yet. Well, I think she's saying like, does she go to the girl who emailed them and be like, Hey, it was Tim. Um, I still think that's a no for me. It's like, <sighs> yeah, it's I, like, I think you can email the girl and be like, Hey, that really sucks. Happy to pay you. Right. I, I literally left right after they came. I didn't drink anything, but it sounds like no one else did either. Pretty sure someone in the group ordered these. And oh I yeah, you can forward. You can explain that. You, I, I don't think you're you're accusing, uh, even though you know who it is, type of thing. And I, I pay the money, and then that person has lost any backup for me moving forward. Right. Even like even if you work in different offices or whatever. You're yeah. gonna meet or see or work with somebody again. They've they've just completely lost. Like you, you got your strike. Or yeah. You get your two strikes basically. And now, if something else happens, now there's a pattern. Well, yeah. You just this is a life lesson. Mm -hmm. And next time you see them in a company wide conference, this guy, you just avoid him. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And you know, if you see somebody else going out with them, you just be like, well, careful of the Tito's on your credit card later or something like that. Yeah, I I don't know. Part of me is like, I think there's sometimes when I'm confrontational and I'm like, this was Tim's fault. And <laughs> I just like to the email be like, all 10 of them be like, hey, we all know who actually ordered the bottle. So if you want to come forward, that'd mm -hmm. be great. Not screw the rest of us out of money. But yeah. I that's like the 10% of me that's like overconfident and feeling feisty that day. And the other 90% is like, I'll probably just Venmo $90 and then bitch about it to like all of my friends. Yeah. Catch Sally on a good day. Yeah. Catch me on a good day. And like, I'm calling you out on the email, but catch mm -hmm. me on a, I guess that's a bad day. Catch me on a good day. And I'm just going to Venmo the $90 and then literally talk shit about you to everyone else. Right. 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 And then it'll get, it'll get to somebody somehow. Well, I think, I think this is a great opportunity to commiserate with some of the other coworkers and be like, this really sucks. Happy to, I, I, I think you can even email all 10 of them and be like, happy to chip in. That sucks. I think many of us did not partake. Uh, wish the person who ordered them would pay for them. And then that you can leave it at that. Yeah. You're not calling them out. Aggressive, yeah. You, you know, be like, but happy to Venmo right now. And then the person feels bad enough and maybe he probably doesn't feel bad and he probably won't ever pay. So unless he gets called out directly, but you can make your opinion known. But I think this is kind of the cost of doing business for going out with your coworkers. People do shitty things. Mm -hmm. uh, people feel very, very confident in situations like that. 
I think if this is a, you're going to work with this person every day and they either in your branch, right? Different story. Yeah. If they live in your city and work for the same firm or whatever, and you're going to see them every day, mm -hmm. this is a clear to me, like you can say something because you're, you're going to interact with them all the time. Mm -hmm. When you're at a big company wide thing, it's like, what's the point? Stay away from the corporate retreat moving forward. Yeah. Hey, guys. My friend is having a bachelor party in Phoenix in a couple weeks. We have an Airbnb right outside of Phoenix and Sedona. He does not seem to want to do anything but hang out at the Airbnb pool. <laughs> I love that. He is planning it all himself, but I have sent him many suggestions of fun things to do. Like great bars, breweries, golf courses, and hiking trails. But he just wants to sit at the fucking pool. <laughs> We're all flying out from the East Coast and spending a lot of money to go. So my question is, is it a trash move for me to get some of the guys to go and do our own thing for some of the time? Like hiking or go out at all. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I don't know why I think it's so funny. This dude just wants to go to Sedona to like I mean, sit at the pool. Okay. The answer here is that it's your friend's bachelor party and you're going there to support him and you should do what he wants to do. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. But I mean, yeah. I totally get this. That's really annoying. Mm -hmm. Especially when, like, I've been on a bachelorette party before where, like, all day the rest of us were like antsy to do something. And she was just like literally in her room all day till like five, like hungover and sleeping. Oh my God. Yeah. So, that's when and, you wake up like that. That's when you go like passive aggressive, like, oh, it's we're on Instagram stories, like, ah, oh, wake up. Like, I think that there is a way to do this, especially somewhere like Scottsdale, where you can be like, hey, uh, a couple of us are going to go hike camel back in the mountain if anybody's interested. Mm -hmm. Because that's not like fully stepping on anybody's toes. You know, yeah. you're not like, yeah. I, like, part of me is like, okay, if, if they're really just hanging out at the pool, there's not like any sanctioned activities it's not like you're breaking off and like people are going to play golf and you're like well we want to hike so we're going to go hike think if you're literally only going to hang out at the pool then saying like hey we're going to go hike mm -hmm. is worth doing i think it's a different story when you're like at night you're like we're all going out i think i think you keep to me the answer is you keep suggesting it and on the bachelor party you also suggest like Hey, it's Friday night. You want to like hit up this place? And if he says no, you're there to support him. You do what he wants to do, but you can keep putting it out there. Maybe hope that some some social pressure from some other people makes want to go. But to me, it's like if that's really all he wants to do, it is his bachelor party. You were there to support him. It's not your trip. Here's my problem. Anytime anybody who's having a bachelor or bachelorette party says, this isn't about me, you guys. I want this to be a vacation for everyone. I want you to just enjoy yourself. Uh, no, bitch. We're there. Do you think that I am flying to Seaside, Florida on a random weekend for four days, missing work on my own accord to hang out with people that I don't know that are your high school friends? No, I'm not. I'm there for your bachelorette party. I'm clearly going to do what you want to do. You're like, I'm going to stunt while I'm there, obviously. But like when when people say that, this they're like, this me. is everyone's vacation. No, it's not. I didn't choose this vacation. <laughs> I didn't choose I this location. I, I didn't choose these people. I'm in Park City. I don't ski. I can't ski. Right. I'm like, that's not, <laughs> this is not what I would have chosen for my first choice. Okay. Right. It's because it's not about me. It's about you. So <laughs> you're already in that contract of like, it's about them. You're doing shit that they want to do. I don't think it's unreasonable to keep suggesting and like, to keep trying to nudge him into doing fun things. But if mm -hmm. that is truly how he feels, hanging out at the house, then that's kind of what you're doing. I think a hike is a little different because it's almost like getting physical activity, like doing something. But like being like <sighs> six of us are going to go to this bar all day is like a totally different vibe. Like you're just like, screw you. Don't like your plans. We've made our own. Three options here, Sally. One, kidnap him, blindfold him, and open him up in uh, Toka Madeira. In Scottsdale. <laughs> Gonna have a blast. Option two, passive aggressive group text. Get the group text, not passive aggressive even, pretty pretty aggressive. Get the group text excited about it. Some some sort of like 
what about this? What about this? Or like throw gifts back and forth, get people like, like you said, social pressure, right? Yeah. Three option three. And this is probably the one that I would do force a reservation down his throat. Basically like, Hey, we can hang all day by the pool, but Friday night I have a reservation for 12 people at XYZ. We're going like th that's, we're going to buy you dinner. Cause it's your, it's your weekend. We're going to dinner. We yeah. can cook the other times. We can do burgers and dodge, whatever. But we're having a steak dinner or Mexican dinner or Italian dinner or sushi. We're paying for you and we're going to have fun. Yeah. That, a couple drinks go, then you flow into the night because you're already down there. You're already downtown. There's a bar next door. You turn that 630 but reservation. But you cannot break off and six dudes go can't to break SDK. Off. No, you, can't like, break off. You have to – he has to be there. He has to be there. But force – if there's one thing you can do to The Bachelor – or groom, or one person, you can force one dinner reservation down their throat for the weekend. Yeah. That turns into, oh, well, there's a bar next door. Let's go. Yeah. There's no more sun. You can't hit by the pool. Once you're out, if someone wants to leave, and they're like, cool, cool, I'm going to go home, and mm -hmm. it's like 10, you're like, okay, well, some people can stay out still. Yeah. Yeah, that's different. You don't all have to like go home at the exact same time, no. but I, I totally agree. I think you put a little pressure on him. If he's really adamant and you like make a reservation, he's like, I do not want to leave this house. Then like, you're going to have to deal with that. Yeah. But I think continuing to like kind of nudge him. Cause again, what's the motivation? Is he exhausted and he really just wants to lay there? Or is he trying not to seem too high maintenance? And it's like, well, just hang at the pool. Don't worry about it. I don't want to like, maybe he doesn't want to yeah. be find, like, Oh, we have to do wine. these eight things. So, Plan something just in case and then throw it out there. Be like, hey, my my friend said whatever restaurant, Masoro. I don't mm. I don't remember any of the restaurants in Scottsdale. It's been like six years since I've been there. You try Toka Madeira. That's a fun one. Have, it's so fun. Got a reservation there. I think we should try it out on Friday. Boom. Easy. I have just I, – I have thoughts of whenever I have my bachelor party one day and I go to like – Go to Park City and Randy's there. He's just like, fuck you. I don't ski. I'm just going to hang. Yeah. Any thoughts, Randy? No thoughts. Uh, you know what I do have thoughts on? Learning another language. Love it. For most of us, learning a second language in high school or college was not exactly a high point in our academic careers. I took French for four years. Uh, have I can like point and shoot. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, a gauche, a droite, that's camera level, left, right. Okay. Uh, I got like, je m'appelle Brett, that's my name. You know, the the point and shoot stuff. Bathroom, car, door, right. airplane. I can't put together a conversation. <laughs> can't do it. But now that there's Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether... You'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. My buddy Dan and I, Sally, uh, thinking about doing Midsummer in Sweden this year. Okay. You've heard of this. It's a festival in Midsummer. Oh, you mean like the one that they made a movie with Florence Pugh? Yeah, I didn't watch that, but I think it's based off that kind of situation. I'm pretty sure it's like a thriller and people start dying and shit. I think it is too. Sounds I fun. can't can't uh, can't tell you, but Sweden obviously not uh, English speaking. So, at the festival, you kind of, you know, got to learn some little Swedish. I think that's what I'm going to be doing the next couple months here. We'll use it before we went to Italy. Oh, really? And had some like good. I mean, here's the thing. The great thing about Babel or like is you can get enough that most mm -hmm. of the places, especially if they realize you're American, will at least appreciate that you put the effort in to yes. like try to speak some of the language. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm using it to brush up on Spanish because I took years and years and years of Spanish uh, and I need to, I just don't have the confidence anymore mm -hmm. of speaking, but I remember a lot of it. And so this is just giving me back the confidence of like, okay, I remember how to conjugate that verb. I just yes. need to, like, I need the refresher. Yep, totally. Randy, what's a, a language you want to learn? Japanese. Oh, wow. Real Randy ambitious. wants to learn Japanese. I think I know why. That's interesting. Uh, Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Like other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts, and their teaching method has been proven, scientifically proven, I should say, to be effective 
Plus, Babbel speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent as well. You're not just learning words and conjugations and sentence structure. You're learning how to say those words. How about that? Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash mail. Again, that's babbel.com slash M-A-I-L for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Sally, you want to read the last one? Yeah. Um, okay. My husband and I are planning a trip sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas. With work, we need to keep it domestic, but want to spring for around four to six days. Our initial thoughts are NYC, but we are also open to other cities. We are both 26 and open to ideas, just unsure where to start. Any advice helps. Um, okay. Thanksgiving to Christmas. I like the NYC for four days yep. situation. It's like, for me, the first two weekends in New York City in December are like so fun because you Christmas get all the Christmas in the Christmas-y. city is, is one of those things that you have to experience. Yeah. So, but th- this is like a full blown, you're committing to that. So you're like going to New York, you're doing the full like Christmas experience. You're having some nice reservations. You're getting real fancy. Sure. You're having some Christmas cocktails. You're mm. bopping around seeing decorations. Maybe the Merriman Christmas cocktail hour. I yeah. Uh, one for I, four. I. <laughs> This is the year we're going to do it. Uh, is uh, it, Sally? I, like, we did that when I was probably 26, and we had the best time. I mm-hmm. Will and I actually went, and we first the first day we were there, we were with some friends from Texas because they had a big contingency there. That was, like, Thursday. And then the next three days we were in Brooklyn with Will's friends. Mm-hmm. So, But we still were in Manhattan for part of the time. Uh, and then the rest of my friends, like, had a full-blown NYC. This is when a bunch of my guy friends were, like, still doing investment banking and stuff. And they, like, did, like – I mean, this is aging me. It was 2016. Like, the whole Bagatelle brunch situation, mm, yep. like, whatever. But you can make it into, like, whatever you want it to be. If you want to be low-key and, like, hang at, like, a a fancy place all day or you – like, we were at – Gem Saloon? No, we were at – um. Ryan always tells us what the name of it is, but they had dress tecates. Mm. Do you know what a dress tecate is? It's a tecate the dressed. No, it's a tecate that has Cholula and lime and salt. Mm. So we had we went and met friends for brunch okay. on Saturday, and Will was violent. Both of us were violently hungover. Will Should have was had Violently hungover, and. Uh, our friend Nate was like, we got to go get you a dress to Kate. Something, something not standard, not, not standard is a men's clothing brand. Not something. It was like a mm, okay. K-N-O-T. I don't know. Anyway, they, um, we get there and Will had about four and totally fixed it. We just really? hung at the bar all day. I, it, I think it was in the West Village. I can't remember. Anyway. We like hung out at the standard. We did, you know, we just, and then one day we had brunch like up on the Upper East Side and then just walked through the park down to the plaza. You like get the full. I love that. It, you just do random, not full touristy shit. You're not like going to the Eiffel Tower. Statue of Liberty. I just said Eiffel Tower. You, I'm you in the Statue of Liberty. You know, you're not doing that, but yeah. you are, you're still seeing the tree. Okay. You're still yep. like maybe popping into a store and getting yourself a little trip gift. Oh, a trip gift. Is yeah. that a, a designated budget set aside for gifts you get yourself on a trip? Yeah. It's like a, a hat or, at Kimosabe in Aspen maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, or like, you know, if you're if you're thinking you're going to buy yourself a little handbag, where else to do it besides like – Madison Avenue. And New York. How about that? Uh, I like that a lot because you get the full Christmas experience, which I thought was so fun and like very festive. Mm-hmm. Um, I, For me, December – I mean – in other places, is not domestic, but if you are in a state that you can get to Mexico, whether it be Cabo or like Isla Mujeres or Tulum or whatever, that's a, that. that's a great four-day trip because the weather is nice. Like we do Cabo a lot in December and it's always really great weather. It's always like mm-hmm. nice to kind of get away from the cold and like just be on the beach and have a margarita. Yeah, um, I think that's a great trip to take. Again, not domestic, but like Mexico at this point, the way that it works, you're not having to like cross an ocean or anything. Mm-hmm. And obviously you still have to have a passport, but it's like way less aggressive than like going to Italy or something. You know what I'm saying? Totally agree. Uh, way two, less of a commitment. Very much so. Two thoughts for me on this one. Okay. One, 
I love the New York City idea. Yeah. May I suggest, if you have four to six days to work with, taking two of those days and doing a night or two up in the Adirondacks or Catskills yeah. to get some snow into it. You can ski if you want to. Um, first, you know, a couple of weeks of December usually aren't good snow yet for skiing. But yeah. it is, it's going to be wintry. It's going to be flurries. It's going to be snow showers. It's going to have snow on the ground. Very cozy. Uh, Catskills are close to New York. Hour, yeah. hour and a half drive. So you can get up there, get some very mountainous, you know, kind of like local divey bars if you want to go out and have a beer, cozy, you know, A-frame cabins if you want to do that. Same thing with the Adirondacks. It's just a couple more hours of driving. Yeah. And it's just Lake Placid if you do make it to the Adirondacks. Um, so hit New York for a couple nights. Go up in the Adirondacks for a night or two. Come back down to New York for your last night. And that's a perfect trip. Four to six days. Can't recommend that enough. Upstate New York is beautiful. I may be biased, but... It's beautiful, gorgeous. Second thought here, uh, ski town without skiing. We mention it all the time. Park City, Big Sky, Jackson Hole, you name it. Beautiful places. You've gone and not skied in Aspen during the time of year where it's beautiful, right? It's like yeah. you can't go wrong at a, at a wintry town that does winter tourism for to, to survive. They do it right for a reason. So Park City is a beautiful little main drag with lights kind of strung across everything and um, – I think you can't go wrong, especially if you want to save hundreds of dollars by not skiing, but being in the environment where uh, people are excited about winter, and I think that's a, a great idea. You know where else slaps? Hit me. Miami. Ooh, welcome to Miami. Yeah. How about that? It's I've never, warm. Uh, if I've, you're like, it just totally depends on your vibe. If you want to like be on a beach, like being somewhere in Florida is going to be a good idea for you. Totally agree. Uh, but if you, if you don't really care and you want to like do something cozy and just chill, there's mm -hmm. tons of places you can go in December. Minneapolis. <laughs> Chicago. Chicago. Uh, I mean. Gary, yeah. Indiana. It's, I don't think. I th no, Gary's not a Christmas capital, Randy. I turned your mic up. No, no, no comment. <laughs> He's from Dyer, Indiana. Okay. In I, between Gary and Chicago, I think. Famously, Gary, Indiana from The Music Man, right? Oh, I don't know. Famously for a lot of other reasons, too. Oh, okay. okay. But also, that song in The Music Man. He, Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5 were born in Gary. Really? Oh. Claim to fame. How about that? Didn't know that. You know what, Sally? We try to help people learn on this podcast. I learned something today. Michael Jackson... And the Do Jackson you suggest Fly. anybody come to Austin in December? Uh, good weather, but it's not the most like Christmassy city, if that's what you're looking for. Austin's a good location, but honestly, the weather is hit or miss. Like yeah. you could have some cold days. You could. Have, it's probably going to be seventy. I think Austin is more of a sure thing if you live in a like super super cold place. Like whenever all of like Will's friends or parents mm. up in Michigan are like going on their, you know, it's April and it's still snowing. And like, oh, yeah. that's the a great March, time April. to come to yes. Austin. Absolutely. Cause like likely it's going to be 75 mm -hmm. and sunny. That's a great time to come to Austin if you're trying to escape winter, but like you can kind of go to Austin any time of the year and it's going to be fine. Yeah. When I, when I think of this trip, they're saying between Thanksgiving and Christmas, I want a Christmas vibe. I want a Christmas movie vibe. I want to be chilly. I want to be cozy. I want a, a fire. And I think north for that stuff. Yeah. Can do a beach if you want, but I think northern cozy fire upstate New York. Yeah. That'll do it for us. Uh, long episode today. Very thanks long. For, Sorry. Thanks for hanging in there. Sorry. Uh, for please subscribe, rate, five stars, review, tell a friend about the show. Hit the hotline number again, 888-362-MAIL. That is 888-362-6245. Or hit the link in the Twitter bio at Mail -in Podcast. Sally, where can the people find you? Sally DeFreeze on Instagram and Twitter. I am Schmerriman at Schmerriman on both of those platforms. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, bye.